Sound on Venus is as unpleasant as the temperature. The surface is approximately 465 degrees Celsius and peppered with peaks and eruptions that ascend to sulfuric clouds. Clouds are indeed being blown all over the dark yellow skies by heavy winds, and the atmospheric pressure is nearly the same as being 1,500 meters underground. Venus could equally be kept for our exploratory rovers and telescopes. Researchers deploy the landers anyway to perish. As a result of the extreme and hazardous environment, missions are timed in hours instead of months. The reason for this is apparent. Venus's heat is extremely damaging to electronic devices. Well, before the Soviets shifted their focus to Venus, significantly less was recognized about this planet. Here in this video, we'll be talking about the declassified photos of Venus taken by the Soviet Union. Stay with us to the end of the video. There's a lot of information to be revealed. Although it is 34 million miles away, several people perceive Mars as Earth's youngest child. On the other hand, Venus is only 25 million miles from Earth, for much of its closest distance throughout its orbit. Size-wise, Venus and Earth are basically equivalent, whereas the red planet is roughly half the massive size of Earth. It indicates that Earth and Venus, excluding a Venusian moon, previously shared the same ancestor. In 2016 publication, NASA researcher Michael Way and his crew suggested the likelihood that Venus might have had fresh water until 700 million years ago. Although the Soviet Union's investigation of Venus has revealed many similarities between our planet and Venus, there remain vital differences that scientists have only recently begun to uncover. Both launched by the United States during the 1970s to investigate the solar system's outer planets, Pioneer and Voyager are often lauded as a significant success in interplanetary exploration. This is in particular because the claims made that the Pioneer, Plaque, and the Voyager Golden Record, both of which have been sent into space with the hopes that they would be found by aliens and help them integrate into human society. Robotic researchers get a lot of focus and often are ascribed human qualities, such as the Viking space probes and many more. However, the Soviet Union's extensive Venus study missions are ignored. At the dawn of the space age, the Soviets began work on a fleet of Venus spacecraft. With the interstellar spacecraft they developed and maintained for nearly 30 years due to the Venera mission, they achieved a great deal by modern standards. The early 1960s saw the space race and the Cold War intensifying. The Soviets wanted to be the first to accomplish as much as possible in the field of space travel. As a result, they could build and launch larger remotely piloted aircraft than the United States could at the time. The Soviet Union had the capability to launch operations into the more difficult inner solar system utilizing four-stage launchers and an advanced telemetry network. The first spacecraft, Sputnik 1, weighed only 184 pounds, making the very first rover in the Soviet Union's Venus expedition sequence, Venera 1, an incredible 1,400 pounds. Like the Dalek from Doctor Who, the Venera 1 probe could identify meteorites and other small particles with its onboard compass, Geiger counters, and micrometeorite sensors. In addition to energizing the probe's innards to a little more than one nitrogen gas, it was also rotated so the equipment could continue functioning at a constant temperature. Unfortunately, like many of its heirs, the first Venera 1 probe was doomed to remain in Earth's orbit. The second attempt, carried out on February 12, 1961, also failed its route to Venus, though it managed to pass the planet at a range of about 62,000 miles. The craft was explicitly designed to sail past Venus. There were many similarities between the Venera 1 and Venera 2, the latter of which also recorded data and transmitted it to Earth. The flyover ended on February 27, 1966, and the spacecraft got within about 15,000 miles before it scorched and vanished. It is still being determined if Venera 2 exploded before or after it sped past the distant world. The Soviet Union developed four more Venera 3 spacecraft to investigate an avowed enemy's air. These units, which weighed roughly 2,000 pounds each, were outfitted with various instrumentation, including a separate pod called a descent module that carried yet another set of sensors. A variety of devices were used, such as a barometer, an infrared altimeter, gas detectors, and thermometers although not all tests yielded definitive results. In March 1966, Venera 3 crashed into Venus rather than settling there as planned. 
This was the first time a spacecraft has ever collided with another planet. While slowly descending into Venus's thick atmosphere on October 18, 1967, Venera 4 collected data for even more than 90 minutes. Not only did it find excessive levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but it also found that it lacked a global magnetosphere. As predicted, it died from the planet's intense pressure and heat. Parachuting via Venus's environment on May 16 and 17, 1969 were the Venera 5 and Venera 6 operations, both practical and relaying information for over 50 minutes. With this mission's help, scientists could characterize Venus's weather patterns better, putting an end to the romantic image of Venus as such an earthly paradise. Venera 7 was equipped with a powerful weapon to help it survive the harsh surface environment for as long as possible. In addition, it carried even more audacious descent module design for a soft landing on Venus. Initiated on August 17, 1970, the mission met with some accomplishment. On December 15, 1970, the rover finally made it to the planet following a parachute tour that caused it to descent faster than expected for more than 30 minutes before crashing into the ground at roughly 38 miles per hour. Venera 7 was thought to have collapsed at first. However, it provided usable data for a brief time. The lander recorded surface temperatures of about 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is almost as scorching as a stone pizza oven. After the probe's sensing elements collapsed during the descent, experts calculated a pressure gradient of roughly 92 bars. Despite our inability to see Venus's surface from space, Venera 8 made some surprising geochemical contributions to add credence to the theory that Venus is Earth's sister planet. The visibility of Venus was another area where Venera 8 made some surprising discoveries. Venera 8 was the second artificial object to land on Venus, and the first to settle on another planet successfully. For the purpose of studying Venus's atmosphere and surface, the Venera 8 spacecraft was launched into orbit on March 27, 1972. It took the spacecraft 118 days to reach Earth after being launched. Venera 7 measured the composition of Venus's atmosphere and despite landing difficulties, reported that it was 97% carbon dioxide. Venera 8 was sent to Venus to confirm these findings. In addition, it recorded a surface pressure of 9.0 MPA and a temperature rise of 887 degrees Fahrenheit, all of which immediately disqualified Venus as a habitable planet for human beings. Venera 7 measurements were verified by Venera 8. However, the photometer on board Venera 8 found nothing out of the ordinary after a very easy landing. Although it was challenging to penetrate the hazy Venetian atmosphere to a planet's surface, visibility just on the surface of Venus was really comparable to that of Earth on a foggy day, and it was very feasible to see approximately one kilometer in each direction. Clouds may be seen very high in the sky. After Venera 8 landed, Engineers working on the Venera programs realized a photo might be taken from the surface. In 1975, Venera 9 made headlines as the first lander to be photograph a planet other than Earth. During its 50 minute and 11 seconds of data relaying after landing, Venera 8 also measured the concentrations of thorium, potassium, and uranium in Venus's surface material. Earth's bezel like those in Hawaii or the mid-ocean ridges, are rich sources of these trace elements also. Today, people remember the Soviet missions Venera 9 through Venera 12, each of which weighed about 5,000 kilos. A big reason for this is that their landers were equipped with cameras able to take pictures of the ground itself. The surface of Venus is one of the most hostile places where humans have sent one of their robots to do their task. More than twice as hot as Tin's melting point, the temperature reached 905 degrees. Conventional radio electronics, paper, and maybe pools of molten lead would all melt to that temperature, as stated by Venera 9. The probe found an atmosphere with a pressure 911 times higher than that of Earth's. The first photographs taken by Venera 9 and 10 are unnerving because they depict a barren, stony, and alien landscape that extends far beyond the horizon in vivid, distorted, and spherical detail. The photographs, however, also show the distinctive Soviet design of the lander's edges. Upgrades from the earlier Venera 9 through 12 probes launched in 1981, the Venera 13 and 14 represented significant technological process. They brought landers with them that were equipped with high-tech acoustic devices to tune into the velocity of the wind on Venus. 
Landers were not included on either of the Venera 15 or 16 probes, despite their combined weight of less than 4,100 kilograms. Instead, they were placed with radar-based imaging technology capable of surveying the hot planet from afar. Even though Venera 15 and 16 were able to map Venus with a resolution of about a mile per pixel, Pioneer 12 could have been the first mission to use radar to do so. These probes transmitted back stunningly detailed images of the rugged landscape, complete with impact craters, steep slopes, and lava-filled basins. Why do we care about the solar system again? Despite Venus's crushing heat, pressure, and dense, corrosive clouds, the planet is remarkably comparable to Earth. Since antiquity, Venus has been considered Earth's tragically misadventured sister. Venus and Earth are planetary neighbors in our solar system and are very similar to each other in terms of size and mass. Since the formation of the solar nebula should have delivered rocks and volatiles in nearly equal proportions to both, the question becomes why their evolutionary trajectory have been so different. What turned Earth into a lucky place and what made Venus a misfortune? Is it common for planets with similar orbits to Earth to build thick carbon dioxide atmospheres to trap solar energy and induce runaway greenhouse effects? Or was Venus an outlier? Venus may have been more Earth-like than it is now. Therefore, we're exploring its past to find out. Before a runaway greenhouse effect transformed it into the hellscape that it is now, Venus is thought to have had liquid water and hospitable temperatures on its surface for a sizable amount of its early life. When Venus first formed during the formation of the solar system 4.5 billion years ago, it was a little warmer than it is now since it is 67 million miles closer to the sun than the Earth. Water vapor in its atmosphere never condensed into oceans, therefore it was never threatened by runaway greenhouse warming like it was on Earth. Astronomers are currently on the hunt for Earth-like rocky planets that orbit their stars close enough for liquid water to exist on their surfaces. Venus is the only other planet in the solar system that is situated in an area that could potentially host habitable planets elsewhere in the galaxy. Consequently, it's possible that the prospects for life in this part of the galaxy are overstated. If Venus is the rule and Earth is the exception, then perhaps we'll find that planets like Venus are considerably less likely to be hosts for extraterrestrial life. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments section. Also, at last, give a like to this video. See you soon.